All right, so it's been a pretty long time since we've talked about wheels, but now seems like a good time to do that. The Zip 1.0 High Top Series just launched, so we're gonna run you through all of the juicy details. So these wheels are compliant, they're lightweight, and they come in a couple of different flavors to meet your budget. So stick around to see if they're the right wheels for you. All right, so we're gonna run through a quick introduction of these new wheels before we go right. All right, first we have two different models. We have the S and the SW. What we have here today is the SW, which is the little bit higher end model, but they also make it in an S. So these are the SWs. They come with tire whiz pre-installed. They come with a 66 point engagement hub. They come with center lock rotor interfaces. They are just a little bit nicer than the S kit, which still has the same carbon rim. It still has the same layup. It still has the same technology. It's just missing tire whiz and it drops to a 52 point engagement hub. It also uses a six bolt rotor, but I don't know, for some people that might even be a plus. Both of these wheel sets have the same intended use case and application, which is XC racing and riding although they are suited for trail bikes up to 130 millimeters of travel. Diving a bit deeper, let's talk about what makes the high top special. And the magic lies in its name, high top. This is Zip's unique carbon layup that offers more compliance. Unlike a lot of other XC wheels, these place an emphasis on compliance rather than all out stiffness. If you know anything about Zip wheels, that's kind of their thing. Uh, the 3.0 Moto wheels are very, very compliant. These wheels are a little bit less flexy than the 3.0 Motos. These feature a more traditional rim profile rather than the single wall design that the Motos have. Zip claims this compliance will make you faster by offering more traction, confidence, and comfort. I'm not one to argue with a little bit more comfort on my bike. Let's face it, I'm not landing on an XC podium anytime soon. I'll take the traction and control every day of the week. Even though these wheels offer a lot of compliance, they are still built around XC riding and racing and that definitely means they are lightweight and easy to spin up. The SWs that I have here come in at 1,325 grams. The S wheels come in at 1,495. Both of those numbers are actually pretty impressive. To compare, we've got the NVM5 wheels. Those come in at 1,388 grams with the lightest hubs that they offer. And it is worth noting those have an internal rim width of 25 millimeters rather than the 30 millimeters on these. Bird who probably makes the lightest wheels out there, has an XC wheel set that comes in at 1,230 grams. But again, those have an internal rim width of 25 millimeters. So that might not be the best comparison. Basically what I'm trying to say is that for the category, these wheels are pretty damn light. So like we've talked about earlier, these wheels are made for XC and short travel trail bike. Most bikes in those categories come with 29 inch wheels these days. So you're out of luck if you wanna put your high tops on a 27 and a half inch bike. These are only offered in 29. Let's chat about TireWiz 2.0 just for a second here. So I think TireWiz is helpful in two different situations. The first being accurate tire pressure measurements. Most bike pumps are about as accurate as my four-year-old son standing at the toilet. TireWiz is accurate down to plus or minus 2%, which takes a lot of the weird bike pump math or hand calibration out of the equation. The second way I see TireWiz as being helpful is within the Axis app. You do get personalized tire pressure recommendations, which can give you a pretty good place to start. Normally, the way I set up my tires is I put 30 PSI in both of them, and it feels like garbage most of the time. And then I take a little bit of air out until it feels less like garbage. And then I keep taking air out until it starts to feel more like garbage. And then I kind of know where I need to be. TireWiz should get you there with a lot less garbage. So now let's talk about how these things ride. For a bit of context, I'm riding the SW high tops on a Santa Cruz Tallboy. This bike has 120 millimeters of rear travel and 130 millimeters up front. The bike itself is surprisingly capable. So I'd have to imagine the Tallboy is in that upper range of the high tops intended application. So while this bike is far from an XC bike, it's still a competent climber and a balanced bike overall. And I think it's a pretty good fit for the high tops. For my tire setup, I have the Maxxis Dissector EXO up front in a 2.4 inch width, and I have 25 PSI in that one. And on the rear, I have a Maxxis Recon 
EXO, also in a 2.4 inch width, and that one I have 26 PSI in. And that is quite a bit less pressure than I think I'd normally run, but I was trying to get a little bit more love and comfort out of this bike, so I dropped pressures just a little bit. And luckily, these high top rims have, they call it a flared or a winged rim wall, which kind of flattens out the top of the wall, making it a little less sharp, making it less likely for you to pinch flat. So starting with uphill performance, it's readily apparent that these wheels are very light. They spin up very quickly. The tall boy historically hasn't always been the snappiest and most XC feeling of the trail bikes, but the high tops do go a long way in putting some pep in its step. They give the entire bike a quick and lively character. In addition to the overall weight, I think the high engagement hubs help out here. With 66 engagement points, that gets you five and a half degrees of engagement. And while that's not the highest, it's certainly enough to not be noticeable. I think once you get under the 10 degree-ish mark, you can't really feel too much of a difference. On the descents, the compliance is the first thing I noticed, and it's very apparent that these wheels are designed to be compliant. But the thing I liked the most about them is they were not as compliant as I thought they were going to be. Keep in mind, I rode these wheels completely blind. I didn't even know they were called high tops when I first threw a leg over them. I just saw zip printed on the rim, and I thought they were going to be pretty flexy like the 3-0 motos. To my surprise, these felt a bit more like a traditional wheel. And that makes sense, they have a traditional rim bed. But they still have a degree of compliance that a lot of other wheels don't have, especially in this category. These wheels ended up much more in line with what I personally prefer in a wheel. They still have that snappy feel that I enjoy in a carbon wheel, but they flex just enough to offer some traction. In fact, I was blown away by the amount of traction I had. So my riding so far has been in dry, dusty, blown out conditions with the tire combo that I have, which you know, definitely is not the most grippy setup. I rode some steep, loose, off camber, rooty, and rocky trails with way more composure than I would have expected from this bike. Yes, the bike is a very capable bike, but I still think I was at the upper limit of what this bike wants to do. And the amount of traction I had, especially in those off camber bits through all the roots and the bumps was pretty impressive. And I have to imagine the wheels played a big part in that. And like I said, in the short amount of time I've had on these wheels, I've had no flat tires and I've had no reliability or mechanical issues, but time will certainly tell. So overall, I'm very happy in the short time that I've had these wheels. They find that really nice balance between stiffness and compliance. They are very light and it's apparent that they are very light. The hubs are good. They've got a lot of nice little features around them like tire whiz that just kind of add to the value of the wheel. Rest assured, I will be riding these and we will be doing a bigger, longer, better video, hopefully where we can compare these versus a lot of other wheels. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.